There's a reason a ton of the top Roblox GFX artists are switching to doing CTR GFX. It's one of the easiest ways to print money with commissions and spike you or your clients click-through rate. Today I'll be showing you how to make CTR style GFX entirely inside of Roblox Studio and Photoshop, step by step with absolutely no Blender involved. By the way, if you want the raw project files from this video, the Roblox Studio file and the Photoshop file, plus an ad-free extended version of this video, check out the brand new GFX Rhino Patreon available at patreon.com slash gfx rhino i only just started it like a couple weeks ago so while i'm still building it up with more raw project files tutorials and everything else it's at a bit of a cheaper price so check it out link in the description below and let's just jump right into the video step one we want to go ahead and open up a roblox studio base plate and what i'm going to do is head up to file and we're going to go down to studio settings right here under rendering you want to make sure the editor quality level right here is set to level 21 if you see if it's set to like zero or just one there it's quite low quality which can be sort of a nice style but i think it just looks a lot better if you've got it at its full quality of 21 you can do a bit lower if you'd like now we're going to head to the toolbox go under plugins right here and install the load character light plugin if i can see the load character light plugin right here it is completely free after you've installed that head up to the plugins tab and under the load character light plugin right here you can type in absolutely any username you'd like to use i've just gone ahead and found some random guy's avatar that is actually a bacon here avatar which fits perfectly for ctr style gfx and i'm just going to go ahead and click spawn r15 for studio gfx it's a good idea to always do r15 avatars because it just has way more bones than r6 and since we're not going to be taking it to blender or anything having a lot more bones is definitely very optimal you can pose the character now if you'd like but i always like to start with the scene so to recreate that i'm going to head back to the toolbox here and change it back to models and we're just going to find whatever models you'd like to use so of course i'm going to have to find some like little race cars here i'm just going to be using this car model from the toolbox here i'm just literally going to use the exact same one just so uh i don't know just because i'm lazy to be honest so we'll size it down so it looks like a little bit of an rc car almost we also need like a race track too so hopefully there's one that just kind of loops that i can shrink down just like we did before honestly i can't really find a good racetrack model so i think i'll just go ahead and make them just driving on the ground we might change that up a bit later a tip for laying out your scenes is to keep them as simple as possible the simpler your scene is the quicker it grabs the attention of those brain rotted little kids it's also a nice idea to kind of put your camera about where you think you might want to have the camera so about here and i think the position of those cars looks pretty all right okay this is definitely a little bit a little bit scuffed but it's all right of a track i just need to align the cars up a little bit more all right next i'm just going to go ahead and set up the grass so to do that i guess i'll just select the base plate and we're just going to go under the properties change the color actually we can just go for this green here and i think saturate it just a bit more make it a little bit brighter so about there we can of course adjust the color of the grass a little bit more in photoshop but as of right now this is actually starting to come together pretty well i like it now i'm going to go ahead and add the stud text to everything it's very popular in ctr style gfx to add the studded sort of grower garden type you know og roblox texture onto everything the way to do this i'm not exactly sure the best way i've tried a few different ways like a certain plugin i've tried all these different things but the easiest way i know of is literally just to go under your part add in a texture here and then inside of just the toolbox under decals we're just going to find like a random stud texture this one here should be fine and then we'll just copy the id under the properties of it and then we can just delete it and drop that id onto the color map content right there and as you're going to see we get the stud texture which is also customizable with the transparency here you can make it more transparent if you do want it to be less bold the biggest downside though is as you can see it's only applied to the top of the mesh i know i know it's all roblox's fault you can't make it apply to every single surface unless you are manually duplicate it and make it apply to every surface so i'm going to do that right now it's uh the best method i could find to be honest if you know of a better method let me know in the comments below but yeah we're just going to go ahead and add it on the great thing about it though is after you've done it once you can literally just duplicate that drag it onto your next part and it's as easy as that really you just got to copy it onto everything that you want there to be a stud texture on and for this i'll probably just i guess increase the transparency maybe i want to even change the texture because i think it needs to be like a dark version right so let me see if i can find a dark stud version all right so this random stud texture here seems to look just a bit better on the grass since it's more of i guess like a darker colored stud literally just a random decal i found but there we go we've got a studded texture applied it's definitely not perfect but you could definitely mess around with it a whole lot more and get it looking a lot nicer but there we go we've got the 
whole layout of the scene pretty much done. The next step now is essentially just to pose up the character. Now posing up your character is also a little bit scuffed and I'll show you why in just a second but first of all to pose up your character you want to go up to the avatar tab at the top of Roblox Studio and you want to open up the animation tab right here by clicking the animation button. It should be somewhere on your screen and you can make it a little bit bigger. After you've opened up the animation editor you just need to select your rig and it'll open it up inside of the animation editor just like this. Next you want to click the plus right here and just do add all body that's going to add every single body part and now it's literally as simple as just clicking a body part and using either the move or rotate tool to just adjust how your character is posed and i literally just learned that it actually has ik ik means if you enable it what you can do is move the torso and the legs are going to bend along with it you know how cool that is like for roblox to have added that i mean if you want to use that go ahead it is pretty nice so we can just go ahead and bend the legs a little bit all right and there we go now that i've got a pose down to save it this is where it gets a little bit scuffed you're just going to go into your home tab here and with the rig selected you just want to i guess just select it in the explorer here you just want to click anchor and what that's going to do is going to anchor every part to where it is and make it so you can't actually add an animation on it if you close the animation editor it's a little bit scuffed but yeah you can see it does actually save the pose now and there we go, I think that posing looks pretty nice. Now to finish up the Roblox Studio part of this tutorial, you just want to go up to the camera inside of the workspace and inside of this camera here, under the properties here, you can adjust your field of view. So you can go 40, you can go 50, you can adjust it just a bit. I think a little bit of a lower field of view usually makes it look a bit more simpler. And you just want to, of course, move your camera into place. I'm also going to rename this guy to literally just a space so his name tag doesn't appear as a final step you can also go under the lighting right here and adjust the lighting however you'd like right here i'm going to disable the global shadows you're going to see of course that's going to remove the shadows but that does mean we can now add like one of those like black circles underneath them that are kind of those cartoony sort of shadows All right, and now if you do go ahead and try to just screenshot it of course it's going to be super low quality right so here is my method to get high quality roblox studio screenshots what you want to do is you want to go up to the top right here and click the plus to add a new tab because for some reason roblox new ui is so terrible they didn't even include these things so we have to make a new tab and inside of this new tab you want to click add tools and then we're going to need two different tools first of all we're going to need the device emulator so you want to search up device and enable that and the second one we're just going to need is screenshot right there and enable that one and we're just going to have those two things right there of course a bit of an uneven number but from there once you've got the camera in a good place you want to go up to device and you want to click on it right there and that's going to enable enable the device emulator now you can see mine's already set to 4k because i've already done this before but what yours will be set to is just one of these random ones you can just completely ignore those what you want to do is click here and scroll down to manage devices open up the manage devices menu you're not going to have any custom devices but you just want to add a custom device by clicking this plus right here you can name it whatever you like i've already got one named 4k and you can probably already guess we're going to be setting it to these similar settings right here so the resolution dpi i'm going to do 300 and then of course we're going to do 3840 by 2160 and you can just pretty much copy these settings right here name it like 4k you can just click save changes and that is of course going to add in your brand new custom device now if you go ahead and change it to this device it's going to go like this but it's actually not displaying in full 4k because as you can see it is still set to physical size or it might even be set to fit to window depending on what the roblox default is i can't actually remember what it is but you want to make sure it is set to actual resolution it's just that now that it's 4k it is so big that it doesn't fit inside of your screen because it is the actual resolution and from there it's literally as simple as just clicking the screenshot button right there it is going to tell you somewhere down here that it saved a screenshot by the way if you're stuck with anything up to this point or you get stuck with something later on make sure to join the gfx runner discord server discord.gg slash gfx runner we've got a dedicated gfx support channel there to help you and of course if you want one-on-one -on -one gfx support and the raw files and everything from this video that's all over on the patreon patreon.com slash gfx rhino Let's continue with the video. All right, now moving on to Photoshop. A lot of game devs could actually just be done at this point already without needing to add much more to it. I mean, if you executed it a little bit better than I did, you would be done. But we're still gonna go ahead and make some nice needed adjustments inside of Photoshop. So the first thing I wanna do to this is actually select some things. So I'm just going to use the range of different select tools that Photoshop provides you, mainly the object selection tool and the polygonal lasso tool are kind of my go-to ones. In my 
my previous CTR tutorial, this is probably the part I noticed people mess up on the most, is they just didn't really get quite good selections. So just definitely make sure you're getting right in there and making sure the selections are pretty accurate. They don't need to be perfect, but just not completely scuffed like I've seen some of them be. Just get a pretty decent selection, and from there, you just want to click Control J while selecting your layer. That is going to put your character in its own layer there. And from there, you want to double click on this new layer we just duplicated. They look quite good with drop shadows. If you want to add in a drop shadow, definitely make sure it is not too over the top. Like literally like this, maybe a little less distant. And the most important thing, we're turning the opacity down super low. Especially for this one, literally that's all. Like you can see it adds just a very slight drop shadow that separates from the background just a little bit more than how it by default is separated from the background. I'm actually going to do the exact same for this racetrack. What you want to do is you want to come down to the shape tool right here and click and drag on it to get the ellipse tool and with that you can set it to just a black and literally just draw in an oval underneath your character like that and you can just adjust it a little bit hold down control and sort of adjust these corners to just make it fit the character a little bit more then you can turn it to a regular path if you'd like and then from there just turn down the opacity and it actually looks really really nice if you'd like as well you could do convert to smart object and you could go up to filter blur and then blur it up that could be a nice way to have more of a blurred shadow you know that could look nice but in my situation i like it like that i'll also just go ahead and add in a drop shadow to the cars because i think it'll look nice you might want to also add like an inner shadow to your character as you can see if you make it full opacity and set it to normal and just kind of size to zero all of that sort of stuff you can get a nice little inner shadow like that which can look really nice if you can adjust it well something like that looks all right you could also do the same thing to the cars to be honest what i'll also do is because i actually have a pretty clear sky in the back that is pretty easy to select i'll just do exactly that i'll go ahead and select the sky in the back should give me a nice accurate hopefully selection of the sky there we go and i'm going to set it as a mask just by clicking the mask button but then i'm going to invert the mask and that should get us just a png and go on google and just find any sort of cartoony sky that you think would fit well i use the exact same cartoony sky in pretty much every cartoony gfx i do it's a goaded sky bro but there i'll just drop it in the back i also like to add in a solid color overlay that's set to like blue and then set it to overlay and that makes it just a lot more blue as you can see which makes it pop a lot more but with this certain style you don't want it super oversaturated i've noticed you want that kind of desaturated a bit more so something like that i think looks pretty nice i'm also going to adjust the size of the whole thing a bit more so make sure to keep in mind that at the moment we are working in 4k resolution and it's going to be cut down to 1920 by 1080 anyway so even if you do scale it up it doesn't really matter and as some final adjustments to the like colors and everything of your scene you can go under the adjustment layers button right here and add in whichever you think would help the scene a bit so for example i might add in the vibrance here and just up the vibrance that's going to make the things that are a bit less desaturated more saturated you don't really want to mess with the saturation too much because it's kind of nice the somewhat desaturated style of this so only mess around with it a little bit i think that looks good right there the grass is way too blue so to adjust that we're going to do what we've done every other time and manually select it i've got a selection of the grass now and i should you can kind of do that manually if you'd like but i should just be able to add like a hue saturation There we go, I think the grass already looks a lot better than it did before. So if we hide these layers, you can see before and after. Looks super nice. You can do that manually for each thing. I'm gonna select the face right here of the character, Control J, and I should just be able to set this to overlay, and I have to put it above the character layer. And that just makes the face a lot more bold, which looks really nice. You can do the same thing for like the hair if you'd like. I think this is coming along really well. To wrap it up, I'm going to show you how to add text. This is the same text that they add in pretty much every single CTR GFX. You just want to select the text tool, type in whatever you want to type. So I'm going to type build race cars in all caps right there, and you can scale it up, adjust it however you'd like. But you want to make sure the font is set to Comic Sans Bold, one of the best fonts of all time, by the way. I don't know why anyone ever hated Comic Sans. It's such an incredible font. I'm so glad it's making a comeback with Roblox CTR GFX. Set it to Comic Sans Bold and change the color to white. We're going to double click 
click on the layer to open up the layer styles here. You want to add a stroke onto it, adjust it to whatever size you think fits pretty well. And there we go, man. If this video helps you at all and you want the full raw Photoshop and Roblox Studio files that I used in this video, that's all on the GFX Rhino Patreon. Once again, patreon.com slash GFX Rhino, along with the ad-free extended version and so much more coming your way. Make sure to like, subscribe if this video did help you at all. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.